In this video, we will see how to perform a run analysis with OptoJump system. To carry out a test, you will need a single meter OptoJump and a treadmill. Let's start. Human locomotion is defined as the art of controlled falling. It can in fact be described as the displacement of the body's center of mass forward and its subsequent catching with the supporting leg. We speak of running when there is a period when neither foot touches the ground, called double flight. At contrary in running, there is no time when both feet are in support. The greater the speed, the shorter is the contact phase and the more time the runner spends in the air. With OptoJump, it is possible to perform a run analysis with a single meter kit and if available with an additional meter kit to cover the length of the treadmill. Once the bars have been connected, go to the Define, Modify Tests section. In the Filter section, only show the predefined tests. Here the treadmill running test is already entered with a speed of 12 km per hour. Clicking on the test will show all the parameters. Should you wish to make any changes, you will need to duplicate the test, modify the parameter to be changed. In this case, the running speed, which is changed from 12 to 10 km per hour. We suggest to pay attention to the direction of the interfaces. If interfaces side is selected, the interfaces needs to be placed in front of the athlete's run. The modified test will be found in the customized test section. Then select one or more athletes, the treadmill running tests with specified speed and press execute. If you enter a new athlete, you will be asked to measure the foot length for a better gait evaluation. We recommend starting the analysis only once the athlete is stable and comfortable with the preset speed. The evaluation should last at least two minutes. Video analysis along with real-time data collection show basic parameters such as flight times, contact times, and speed. These give an indication of any issues at the level of asymmetry and contact time, for example, there is a strong inverse relationship between running speed and contact time. As running speed increases, contact time decreases. Athletes with shorter contact times use less energy and can run faster than those with longer contact times. From these parameters with a dedicated report, it is possible to understand whether certain behaviors at the level of biomechanics can lead to running injuries. On treadmills, it is necessary to take into account the fact that the detected interruption of the LED occurs 3 mm above the ground on a flat surface, and therefore the characteristics of the mat may affect the measured parameters. At the end of the test, a dedicated report will show parameters and overall evaluation of the athlete's performance. In case it is needed to train the athlete at the level of motor pattern reinforcement, the biofeedback section will show in real time the stroke parameters to be improved, such as flight times, contact times, acceleration, and speed. At the end of the biofeedback system test, a diagram will show the steps selected for an evaluation of motor patterns. From the results section, it is possible to resume the test and study on the acquisition of the measured values together with the video. By selecting print, the system will display an initial report view showing the averages of the main parameters such as flight time, contact time, and cadence time. Let's dive into the report. What immediately catches our attention is the significant asymmetry and variability seen across all parameters. Take the 9.2% asymmetry in flight time, indicating a longer time off the ground for the left leg. This could point to differences in strength or how the muscles are controlled between the two legs. Moving on to the 7.3% asymmetry in contact time, where the right leg spends more time on the ground together with the overall variability. This suggests a possible imbalance in weight distribution or a difference in how the legs handle the support phase. While the cadence of 165.39 isn't exceptionally high, the 12% variability suggests a flexible adaptation in walking or running. This adaptability might be their way of adjusting to different surfaces or environmental changes. 
Let's now dissect the duty factor for each side. On the left, it sits at 33.3%, signaling that the left foot makes contact with the ground for about a third of the entire stride cycle. The variability at 9.56% suggests a quite consistent pattern in this aspect of the running motion. Shifting to the right side, we observe a duty factor of 36.7%, meaning the right foot is in contact with the ground for just under two-thirds of the stride cycle. However, the higher variability of 20.83% indicates more significant fluctuations in this parameter across different running phases. In this page, I'd like to highlight an interesting discovery in our gait analysis, a slightly shorter step length on the right side. However, let's not jump to conclusions just yet. What's truly fascinating is the variability we've observed. On the left side, we see a consistent step length with a mere 2.9% variability. On the contrary, the right side paints a different picture with an 11.7% variability. This points to a remarkable adaptability, especially considering the confined setting of the treadmill. The treadmill environment rules out external terrain influences, raising intriguing questions. Could this heightened variability be a deliberate adjustment, a response to the repetitive nature of treadmill running, or perhaps a unique neuromuscular adaptation? Let's finally zoom in on some intriguing findings from our gait analysis, focusing on the predetermined velocities for both the left and right sides, considering that the treadmill sets the speed. On the left side, we observe a steady pace with a velocity of 2.83, showcasing a consistent and reliable gait pattern. The variability at 8.1% adds to the assurance of a quite unstable walk on the left side within the controlled treadmill environment. For a more complete analysis, we suggest visiting our Academy area in the section dedicated to running-related webinars, the tutorials website section, and the first part of the summary report, with an extensive description of the parameters displayed in the report. The last part of this tutorial related to race analysis is dedicated to the report of a small case study reported by one of our distributors. It's a laser-based technology, and it measures the essential uh, kinematics of running performance. Um, so by that, I mean step frequency, uh, step length, and the components that um, comprise to make velocity. Little margins add up, so you can, you can be adding a half a centimetre on every step you do, and in, in a 100 metre race, that will make a big difference. So you just look for those little, little gains, and, and they have a big sort of end up result. So this is step one, step two, step three, step four. And if we look at step five here, contact time is actually slightly increased. Whereas what I'm looking to see happen is I'm looking for those contact times to slowly and gradually be decreasing. Because when that happens, then we start to see step frequency go up, and in turn we see velocity go up as well. Every tenth or hundredth of a second counts, and, and these are all accumulative and, and will add up and help me run as fast as I can. As a coach, the most rewarding thing is working tirelessly, you know, 365 days a year to put an athlete on the start line, and when the gun goes in that moment for them to execute. I put myself in a, in a team where everyone's got one common goal, everyone's happy and positive and, and working towards the same thing. And hopefully when Rio comes around, I'll be in the best possible shape to win a medal.